today in this lecture we will talk about concepts related to renal blood flow and especially the determinants of renal blood flow the factors which will determine the renal blood flow or have an impact on the renal blood flow the determinants of the renal blood flow are important because any change in any determinant can increase or decrease the renal blood flow is we previously discussed that the the blood flowing to the kidney is very high the amount of blood flowing to both the kidneys is around 1100 ml per minute or around 22% of the cardiac output now not only is this blood helping in the metabolism of the different cells in the kidney but it is also helping in the filtration process now the blood enters through the renal artery and it leaves through the renal vein the flow the renal blood flow is basically determined by the gradient divided by the total renal vascular resistance now the gradient of the pressure the pressure gradient is basically determined by pressure of blood in the renal artery minus pressure of blood in the renal vein now suppose for example something is flowing from top of the hill to the bottom of the hill the gradient will be between the top and the bottom similarly the gradient is between the pressure in the renal artery and pressure in the renal vein and then it is divided by the total renal vascular resistance now at each and every point in the vasculature there is a resistance and when resistance at each and every point of the vasculature is combined it will give us the total renal vascular resistance when the blood starts flowing into the kidney its pressure is around 100 mm of mercury which is almost equal to systemic arterial pressure then the blood starts entering into the interlobar arteries interlobar arteries even in the interlobar arteries the pressure of the blood is around 100 mm of mercury then the blood enters the arcuate arteries and in the arcuate arteries as well the pressure of blood is around 100 mm of mercury <coughs> after the arcuate arteries the blood enters the interlobular arteries and in the start of interlobular arteries the pressure is still around 100 mm of mercury but at the end of the interlobular arteries the pressure becomes around 85 mm of mercury now slight decrease of pressure may occur in, in interlobar and arcuate but it is around uh, 100 mm of mercury and the the decrease in pressure is minimal now we are trying to calculate the decrease in pressure at each and every point so that it can give us a clue about the total renal vascular resistance and when we have the total renal vascular resistance then we will be able to calculate the flow so the first decrease in pressure occurs at the level of interlobular arteries here is the renal artery here is the interlobar renal artery here is the arcuate renal artery and here are the branches of the uh, the arcuate arteries which are the lob interlobular renal arteries now from the lobular arteries arise the afferent arteriole the afferent arteriole at the start of the afferent arteriole the pressure is around 85 mm of mercury but at the end of the afferent arteriole the pressure is 60 mm of mercury so there is a big decrease there is a decrease of around 26 mm of mercury 26 mm of mercury decrease occur between start of the afferent arteriole and end of the afferent arteriole then the blood enters the glomerular capillaries and the start of the glomerular capillaries has, is there is a pressure around 60 mm of mercury and at the end there is pressure around 59 mm of mercury after which the blood enters the efferent arteriole in the start of efferent arteriole the pressure is around 59 mm of mercury and at the end of the efferent arteriole the pressure is 18 mm of mercury so the biggest decrease in pressure occur in this zone from the start of interlobular artery here from the start of interlobular artery here to the end of efferent arteriole these three points basically bring the de biggest decrease in pressure biggest decrease in the arterial pressure inside the kidney so these points basically represents the highest resistance and they are contributing to the total renal vascular resistance after the efferent arteriole some blood directly enter the interlobular veins and some blood go into the peritubular capillaries now the peritubular capillaries they are contributing to the vasa recta and they are going deep in the medulla now suppose this is the kidney this this most of the vasculature is in the renal cortex and the peritubular capillaries they are diving deep into the medulla so in the start of the uh, inter uh, peritubular capillaries the pressure is 18 mm of mercury at the end is around 8 mm of mercury then at the, in the start of interlobular veins and our arcuate veins and the interlobar vein the pressure remains 8 mm of mercury the pressure at the end of the peritubular capillaries is 8 mm of mercury then at the start of the interlobar uh, sorry in the start of the 
interlobular vein at the end of the interlobular vein then the start of the arcuate veins and the end of the arcuate veins and then the start of the interlobar vein the pressure remains around 8 mm of mercury but at the end of the interlobar vein the pressure becomes 4 mm of mercury and that pressure remains even in the renal vein so this is the renal vein now the decrease in pressure the decrease in pressure is around 96 mm of mercury because the renal artery pressure is 100 and the renal vein pressure is around 4 so the decrease in pressure is around 96 and the resistance at each and every step can be calculated at each and every step the decrease in pressure can be calculated and which is uh, when put in this equation it can give an idea about the renal blood flow now the main the main factors the main factors which decreases or the main points in the vasculature which bring the maximum decrease in the arter arterial pressure are these these regions the interlobular arteries afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole but from from, from, there are a lot of factors there are a lot of factors the nervous system the hormones and different kinds of chemicals which can act on these areas and either they can constrict or dilate these regions now any system either the nervous system or the hormonal system if they constrict these regions and the resistance in these regions increases overall then the blood flow will decrease but if these areas of the vasculature they get dilated either due to the stimulation of the nervous system or due to the hormonal system then the blood flow will increase so the blood flow is determined by gradient divided by the total vascular resistance gradient is basically renal artery pressure minus renal vein pressure divided and then the resistance the total resistance is the sum of resistance at each and every point and the pressure basically at the start of the renal artery and then this end of the renal artery start of interlobar artery and end of interlobar artery start of arcuate artery end of arcuate artery and then the start of interlobular artery is around 100 millimeter of mercury the pressure starts decreasing at the level of interlobular artery and then at the end of interlobular artery the pressure has decreased to around 85 mm of mercury then a big decrease occur in the afferent arterial level where the pressure at the start is 85 and at the end is 60 and another big decrease in the pressure occurs at the efferent artery arteriole where the start of the pressure start of efferent arterial pressure is 59 and at the end is 18 millimeter of mercury now this this region basically shows the biggest decrease and this region if it ever get dilated it will have maximum benefit in increasing the blood flow and this region if ever have some changes which increases further resistance the resistance of these areas the afferent arteriole or the efferent arteriole then it will decrease the blood flow as well and when the blood flow decreases the filtration process will decrease and when the filtration process decreases the urine formation will be affected because the urine formation starts at this region because this is the glomerular capillaries and here we have the Bowman's capsule and the urine formation begins here because the glomerular capillaries start the filtration and the filtrate then moves through the Bowman capsule into the nephrontibule and finally the urine formation occur which goes out through the ureter so whenever the blood flow through the kidney increases or decreases it definitely it definitely will have impact on the urine formation so that's all about the determinants of renal blood flow and how we calculate the renal blood flow in the coming lecture we will discuss step by step the different uh, systems the different factors which can either increase or decrease the renal blood flow thanks a lot for watching the video